Good day, everybody. It's David Calamette with Alabama Coasting. I'm here with Miles Mead, the general manager of the Wash House Restaurant in Point Clear, Alabama, and also Noble South in downtown Mobile. We came and had dinner here about a month ago and had a little conversation afterwards and for we had some te technological issues, just like talking, but a technical issue and we couldn't, uh, couldn't get that posted. So unfortunately, you know, we, we get to come back and have dinner again. So, Yay. And have that conversation. <laughs> When we were here, uh, it's just, the, if you've never been to the Wash House, it's just a treat because it's just a quaint little location um, with fantastic food, the ambiance is wonderful. And if you talk to somebody who's been here, this is something I've, I've picked up since our, since our last meeting. If you talk to somebody who's been to the Wash House, they get this kind of wistful look in their eye. It's like, oh, I remember that place. It's really, really cool. So tell us a little bit about the restaurant. Uh, well, um it's a great place. Um, I love working here. Um, we uh, we really try to key in on that, like you said, that special occasion for guests. Um, people sometimes can't make it here all the time, but when they do, you know, obviously birthdays, anniversaries, um, you name it, they come here, they enjoy it. That's when Tuesdays. They, that's, yeah, exactly. Just a random Tuesday. <laughs> they get that special look in their eye, like you talked about, because they remember, man, when I was there that time. Awesome experience, but you know. We do have a great local crowd from, from Fairhope. The, the city supports us really well, the local community. And uh, we do have a nice captive audience there from the Grand Hotel, which is right down the street. But, uh, but yeah, just like you said, we, uh, we, we, we love locals and, uh, and we love giving them that awesome experience every time they come. And the, the Wash House, the, the menu is primarily locally sourced. We're sitting on beautiful Mobile Bay, but you're known for your steaks as much as your seafood. Yeah, um, we try and source as much local as we can. Um, you know, obviously, uh, rack of lamb. You're not going to get a rack of lamb from a farm in fair, but if you do, a little questionable. Um, but uh, but no, for the most part, we try and uh, all of our seafood definitely, all of our fish, shrimp, oysters, local as they can get right here out of the Gulf. Um, for all of our produce, we generally use like a two hour rule of thumb, um, nothing more than two hours away. So we try to source all of our produce from uh, local farms either in the Panhandle of Florida, right here in Baldwin County, Mobile County a little bit in Mississippi and a little bit further reach into lower Louisiana when we can. But uh, but yes, produce, seafood, all very You know where the produce comes from. Exactly. You know where it yep. comes from, which is, which is exciting. Yep. That, that's, that's farm to table as it should be because it's not necessarily everything farm to table, but you know where, it's not, everything not, is not local, but you know where it all comes from. Exactly. And we do try to keep it local for the most part. Exactly. Um, but I mean, that's why our menu does change often. Uh, people, for instance, at Noble South, uh, people ask us all the time, oh, when are the Brussels sprouts coming back? Oh, when are the Brussels sprouts coming back? Well, Brussels sprouts aren't in season, but a couple months a year. Right. And, uh, you know, we could have them on the menu all the time, but they're going to come from California or Mexico or not here. So, right. perfect example. That's, so. That, that's great. Mm -hmm. So, we had dinner here, started off with the gumbo. Mm -hmm. Awesome gumbo. It is, every restaurant on the Gulf Coast has to serve it. Mm -hmm. A staple in the south and when when your gumbo elicits responses like that's as good as aunt so-and-so's yeah uh, tell me what's in your gumbo um that's a recipe a secret recipe i can't really tell I know you that, that. <laughs> but no the, the the key with gumbo is really just consistency like yeah. you said um uh, we have the same guy that's been making our gumbo for years that's the story so so uh you know he's the only person that's allowed to make it um, if he's going to be off for a couple days, we make sure he makes enough to get us through a couple days for a couple off days. Um, but yeah, that's the key with gumbo is just consistency, using fresh seafood and not frozen, um, and fresh, you know, I think it's the fresh produce, you know, fresh local okra whenever we can get it, it goes into the gumbo as well. Um, so yeah, that's the key to the gumbo, just consistency and using as fresh as product as you can. And, and you make it long enough, you know how to make it. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, to f finish with my meal, I had the ribeye, which mm -hmm. is fairly new to the menu, mm -hmm. um, and it was just, it's the tenderest steak I've ever had. Yeah, I'm a big ribeye fan. Um, me and the chef, uh, one of the chefs, Wade Seltzer, he's also one of the owners, uh, we've had filet and Chateaubriand on the menu for years, yeah. uh, and we, you know, we're both big ribeye fans. We're like, man, we just, we want something with a little more fat content on it. So we decided that we would add a ribeye this summer, and it's been a big hit, a huge hit. Um, it's, uh, it hasn't quite outsold the filet, because you know, well, you, people you come here. The fillet has been on exactly. the menu. Forever. People come here for that. Yeah, but uh, but no, the ribeye, like you said, it was a good choice. Um, uh, grilled perfection, medium rare, doesn't give you. And you got a that. thick crust on it. Oh yeah, yeah, we blacken it almost. Yeah, yeah. And that's a salt and pepper crust. Just a salt, yeah, black peppercorn and salt, and that's it. We just yeah. cook it on that and give it a nice, nice crispy crust, salty, peppery crust. 
uh, tender, juicy inside. It does. I'm telling you, uh, it, <laughs> it is something else. Uh, so on the seafood side, what are your, what are the, the top choices on the seafood side? Uh, right now, I'm a huge fan of oysters. Right now, um, I don't know if y'all are familiar. But I'm sure you've heard. You know, uh, the whole Mobile Oyster Company that's coming abroad. You know, we've got um, several different oyster farms, yeah. basket raised farms that are coming in. Point of Pins, uh, Isle Dauphine. Um, Murder Point. There's yes. a, lot of, a lot of great places down here in Alabama that are growing oysters to exact specification. So that they're fantastic. Exactly. When you get an oyster from Mobile Bay that's a farm-raised oyster, they're wanting this exact oyster, like a nice inch and a half to an inch and three quarter, perfect, nice pearly white in, inside the shell, nice salinity, very clean. Um, and so right now, I'm really excited about our oysters. Who are you I, serving primarily? What do you mean? Which which oysters do you use? Oh, we use uh, Isle Dauphine as much yeah. as possible. Um, they're just the more easy ones to come by. Murder Point's a little more expensive and harder to come by, so are Point of Pins. Uh, but the, the Isle Dauphine are the ones that are a little more prevalent around the area right now this time of year. Um, but uh, yeah, they are awesome. We, we love cooking with them. We do uh, our fried oyster lettuce wrap appetizer with them right now. Yeah. Fantastic. We don't put them in the gumbo. A little too expensive to put in the gumbo. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, if, any, if you want to add fried oysters to your meal or get some raw oysters, they are awesome right now. And yeah. the, the beautiful thing about those oysters is the, is the size. They're easily manageable. Yep. So as a, so eating raw oysters, you're not you're not getting smaller, too yeah. small, too big. <laughs> they're just they're they're perfect in there, and they've got that great mix of salt content. Yep. Zerlock, I love his his talk on Murder Point. His big deal is butter. Yeah. My oysters <laughs> taste like butter. Like butter. <laughs> perfect balance between salt and earth. A little yeah. bit of butter. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's just I mean that's uh, we're doing a lot. In, in the next, you know, with Alabama Coasting, in terms of talking about oysters and promoting oysters, there's some things we're doing in the upcoming issues mm -hmm. to really promote promote that a little bit. The World Food Championships, we'll do some oyster stuff down there. Awesome. And Can't wait for that. Wharf. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, so let's switch hats a little bit. Let's talk about Noble South. It's okay. a little different menu, or a lot actually a lot of different menu with the same same basis. And same basis. Locally yeah. sourced and, and so. <laughs> um, we're going to move over to Noble South, like you said. It's. Uh, much more hardcore locally sourced because it's definitely a farm to table restaurant yep. um, and where you see that is through the protein choices um, you get the same great produce and gulf seafood over there but whenever we do uh, serve something besides seafood or or the you know the local produce um, we're sourcing local rabbits um, uh, we're actually bringing in uh, you know if we do have cow on the menu it's it's not like your typical filet or whatever uh, there's actually a great new wagyu uh, wagyu beef farm in, uh, in mid-Louisiana right now. It's called Rain's Wagyu. Um, great beef. They're producing Wagyu beef out of that area. So if we are getting steaks, you know, that's, you know, it's only like a two and a half, three hour drive. So very local for, for the beef right. produce. Uh, but, you know, yeah, we definitely feature more of the, more of the seafood over there. Um, you know, you're going to see a lot of weird stuff. You know, we have cow tongue on the menu. Uh, we have... Uh, it wasn't on the menu last time I was there. No, it, it rotates easily. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Right, well, right now it's not on the menu. It's on our, our, our charcuterie board. It's a, a oh, yeah. pastrami style cow tongue. It's very nice. We, we house cure our own cow tongue and smoke it, and it's 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 special. It's good stuff. Interesting. But uh, but no, yeah, uh, same same concept, but definitely a little more focused on the farm to table aspect, with uh, you know some different game, if you will. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fried catfish is fantastic. Whole fried mullet. Awesome. Mullet. Yeah. <laughs> Head to tail. What are the other specialties there that uh, that people like? Uh, you know, I, I touched on the Brussels sprouts. You know, Chris yeah. is big on uh, the fried Brussels sprouts when they come back in season. Um, one thing that uh, one thing that we're doing right now that we're really focusing on, like I just talked about, we're really supporting uh, the the Rains Wagyu Farm in, uh, in in Louisiana. So we've got a couple of nice steaks in the menu over there right now. So we're really uh, really focused on that, uh, and you know, and as always, we're really pushing the Gulf Seafood, yeah, like we always do. Yeah. So. Now, two other things that are kind of signature elements of, of Noble South is your desserts mm -hmm. and your cocktails. Yes. And I'll definitely touch on those. Uh, fantastic cocktail menu right now. Um, we actually uh, we just finished the menu a few weeks ago. Uh, we're featuring, uh, you know, everyone likes to put their own spin on cocktails and create it, it, what they try to call their own cocktails, but we really have put together a nice nine to 10 drink cocktail menu that is signature to us. No one else is doing these things. You know, we're using all kinds of weird ingredients like mezcal with the worm in the bottle and um, all kinds of neat stuff. And it sounds bad, but man. No, 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 no. I'm six blocks from there. I fantastic. live six blocks from there, so that's fantastic. Trouble. <laughs> yeah, fantastic cocktails. You know, uh, the Haberdasher is right down the street. They do some fantastic cocktails as well. So we're not really trying to compete with them. We're just trying to bring, you know, awareness to downtown area. Hey, if you want a nice cocktail, there's some several places that actually are serving, you know, cutting edge 
just like big cities, really nice cocktails. So, uh, so we're focusing on that, and as well as like uh, like you touched on with desserts, you know, one of Robbie's favorite things at our restaurants. Uh, we uh, we everything's made in house. Um, buttermilk pie. I don't know if you're a fan of buttermilk pie, but we're talking the probably like I'm a big fan of buttermilk pie. My grandma, both of my grandmothers, uh, used to make the most amazing yep. buttermilk pie, and uh, this this uh, kicks kicks their butts. So. <laughs> It's a great buttermilk pie. We make a seasonal cobbler all the time. Uh, right now, we're using uh, peaches from uh, Chilton County, Alabama. Of course. Uh, we're going to roll into, um, probably going to roll into, probably blueberries here pretty soon. Um, but, uh, but no, try and keep it as seasonal as we can. So the peaches are definitely going strong. Um, and uh, something else that uh, that is always a, a winner, uh, Chris makes a great cheesecake. But he doesn't use, like a traditional recipe, he uses uh, Bell Chef goat cheese. Oh, yeah? So it makes it... Cream. It's definitely yeah, lighter. A lighter. Yeah, yeah, it's not as dense and filling. You get that same great flavor, but it's definitely more like fluffy, and creamy flavor, and not not the dense denseness of a normal cheesecake. So, yeah, yeah fantastic desserts as well. The other thing, and it's a, Wash uh, Noble South is a small place, but yes. you've also got that the, the that sidecar yep. lounge as a private lounge. It holds what a dozen. Well, it's about twenty people comfortably. Twenty people. Yeah, yeah. So you can do a private party. You're mm -hmm. you're not separate. You're in your own little space. Um, but you still got the, the full restaurant menu and, yep. and, and, and of course all the great bar stuff as well. Exactly, and Randy, he's our uh, he's one of our mixologists at the restaurant. He kind of sidecar, the sidecar lounge is his little baby sort of. Yeah. And uh, he, you know, he, he takes pride in the sidecar lounge. So whenever uh, whenever there is like a private party over there, it's kind of like it's his deal. He's in charge of the cocktail menu and the food and everything. So it is really special. And it's, uh, it's open Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays for normal dinner service and cocktails. And then at, as you mentioned, for private parties as well if somebody wants to book it for a private party it's a great idea so two places on the gulf coast that you cannot go wrong in, in choosing if you're in baldwin county if you're in fairhope or point clear if you're at the grand you have to come at least one dinner at the wash house and you're open for brunch over here as well nope just brunch and mobile just, just mobile just brunch and mobile okay so that's so that dinner here and then in mobile take the trip to downtown mobile to noble south open for lunch and dinner over there Plus Sunday brunch, which is just about a month or so. It's, yeah, it's still brand new, about five weeks in. Yeah. So great choices. Mobile has become a really nice brunch town. Lots of opportunities, and, and Noble South. It, 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 I keep hearing great things about it. I haven't been there for brunch yet, but I'll be there soon. You need to come check it out. Okay. Uh, reservations online at both places. Both line. You can book through OpenTable.com. You can book reservations on our website if you'd like, and uh, and you can call us on the phone too as well. Great. So three right. ways to book. I'm telling you. Bon appetit, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.